Hey there, welcome to the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. McKinney ISD had a school board meeting, or what was it the trustees or whatever? And on the whole council, there was one dude that was sitting on the far right. We saw the video that uh, people had thrown up online. And some guy in a cowboy hat says, listen, we have a, uh, a rule here that would prohibit boys, people with the XY chromosome, to uh, from going into the girls' bathrooms, the women's locker rooms, and participating in the girls' sports. Does anybody second the motion? Nobody seconded the motion. So it was shelved. And here we are. McKinney has now been transified or transitioned, or do we have a good word for that? Brandon Walton's from Texas Scorecard. <laughs> Transformed, maybe. Transported. I don't know. Transwoked like right? or something. Whatever. Yeah. But in McKinney, in our own backyard, mm-hmm. we are now going to be faced with the possibility of little boys are going to be allowed in the locker rooms with your little girls. And some people are okay with that, Brandon. Well, I mean, it's, it's shocking to see this, but especially in a place like McKinney, because you think a A resolution like this would be such a no-brainer. I mean, this is happening at the same time that the Biden-Harris administration had come in a few months ago, said they were going to rewrite Title IX. They were going to make it so that girls, you know, boys could go in girls' spaces, vice versa, uh, you know, sports, whatever, just completely, uh, completely eroding those protections. That's been tied up in court. So for the most part, that's not gone into effect. Um, And yet you have some school districts going ahead and taking the affirmative step and saying, well, we're going to, we're going to make sure we put it in writing. We're going to have a policy that we don't allow uh, biological boys to compete on girls sports teams or enter their locker rooms. And this is something that has passed out of a number of school districts. I believe both Carol and Keller ISD have have passed resolutions like this, as well as some other uh, districts around the state. And yet, McKinney ISD, I mean, you have seven board members and only one, only one, who is, his, his name's Chad Green, only one uh, had put forward the motion, couldn't even get a second. Yeah, uh, and, and that was something else that was on my uh, agenda to bring up. You know, it's not all schools. Keller got it right. They just adopted their new policy on pronouns and whatnot, and uh, they mm-hmm. said, we're going by the biology period, point blank, end of story. Now, what can what can parents here do? do? If you have a girl that's in McKinney ISD, do you just have to cross your fingers and hope a little boy doesn't come in the locker room when she's changing? I mean, the the hope would be that for now the McKinney ISD is not going to go along with this. I mean, just because they didn't pass this resolution affirmatively opposing this doesn't mean that they're going to allow this tomorrow, that they're going to start allowing boys on girls' teams. Um, but it is something to concern. I mean, if you're a parent there, this is something that you need to be bringing up to school board members. Um, you know, I would say unless unless you're, you know, your your members, Chad Green. I mean, you've got six other school board members there uh, that that couldn't even find the courage to speak up and, and, and second the motion to even have a vote on it. I mean, it's like worse than if they had voted it down. Bro, uh, Ken Paxson, so he lives in McKinney, or he has a house in McKinney. Uh, in that area, yes, yeah. yes, I believe so. Yeah, I don't know if he's technically in McKinney ISD, but I remember when they he, he got uh, his house swatted. It was his McKinney house that yeah. uh, that had the police go there. Uh, th- look, another thing that concerns me about this, if not for one viral video getting out, this wouldn't have been reported by anyone. The local media only reported on it to kind of explain away and shoot down the madness that's coming out of these MAGA freaks who are so <laughs> concerned about oppressing people. Why do you even care? So, yeah, the the this is why I... I um, I'm double shocked. Like they did this and they try and hide it. And when it can't be hidden anymore, then they try and excuse it. Yes. And, you know, you mentioned Keller ISD, but, you know, Carol ISD, for example, has actually been uh, has been part of, I believe, the the legal fights against some of the stuff from the Biden administration, forcing this kind of uh, uh, this kind of woke trans uh, trans stuff on kids. And so. You know, I would say it's it's not even just enough to have a school board right now that is just at least voting for common sense. Uh, but but they need to be fighting against it because uh, and fighting for for this stuff, especially against the, the current administration that we have now in D.C. And so you have some districts like Carroll ISD are doing that and some, unfortunately, like McKinney ISD are not. Well, I think most of them are getting it right, but there's nothing we can do unless you live in McKinney. To, to fix this. The people of McKinney are going to have to fix mm-hmm. this. You're going to have to get off of your butt, stop binge-watching your favorite Netflix show for maybe 20 minutes or so, 
find out who these other people, these disappointing human beings who have no interest in protecting little girls are, make sure they don't get reelected. Make sure there's punishment, because if, if people see that, then this will stop. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's the only way. And you've seen this happen in, in parents getting involved in school boards over the last couple of years. And it's been a positive thing. It's time for parents in McKinney to do the same. All right, Brandon, uh, TexasScorecard.com. Thank you very much for y'all's excellent work on this uh, subject here. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. TexasScorecard.com is, is a website that you need to be going to on a somewhat regular basis. And uh, I know you get a ton of email, but if you don't mind, sign up for their newsletter as well. I get the Texas Minute every day. And uh, if you start getting that, you'll realize I use quite a few of those stories for show prep. Got any comments? 800-288-9227. It's the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Yeah, let's slow dance, Garrett. Welcome to the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Sorry, I just have strong opinions on the bumper music. Uh, I'm going to be taking uh, your suggestions here. What questions do you think Kamala should be asked in tomorrow's CNN interview? And this is kind of a big deal because she doesn't do this. She hasn't done this yet. And she hasn't really had to answer any questions. So is, this is a chance for the American people to finally find some things out. Now, I suspect that you are going to want to ask questions that could ruin her. That's fine. Uh, there shouldn't be any questions that ruin a candidate. So I, I count that as legit. If I was running for office, there's not there's not a question you could ask that would ruin me. What question uh, could you ask Trump that would ruin him? Because CNN and ABC and NBC and CBS would like to know because they would ask him immediately. So 800-288-9227. There's something else uh, going on today. My next guest is going to be uh, addressing this with you because a lot of you are in the same spot. You uh, you just got done raising your kids and now you got to take care of your parents. You're kind of sandwiched between generations here. And we have the senior care industry now suing the Biden administration because there's some uh, rule changes regarding their minimum staffing requirements in nursing home. Adam Lampert's on. He's a senior care expert. What do, what do these new rules spell out, Adam? What's changed? Hi, James. So uh, thanks for having me. Well, this rule was rolled out in April, and it's 329 pages. And essentially, I think what happened was that through the pandemic, there were a lot of eyes on nursing homes. And there's a recognition that there was a lot of burnout of the nurses that were there. And on reflection, the, uh, the conclusion was that the care was just not meeting standards. And so the government decided to come and dictate that they wanted to have certain ratios for staffing. And so they came down with this rule and said they wanted certain staffing requirements for nurses and for caregivers uh, in nursing home environments. Wait, are they and- asking for more or less staffing requirements? Absolutely more. So, okay. for instance, historically, ratios might be 20 to 1, one caregiver for 20 people in a nursing home. And the, whoops, Amber Alert. No, we're still here. Um, if that's okay. going in through your phone, yeah. I, I apologize. It's not supposed to. That's okay. So, uh, there are, uh, the ratios are at least 20 to 1 nursing homes. And basically, they're saying we're, we're, we are mandating that you have at least, I'm gathering, if I run the numbers right, probably 10 to 1. For caregivers and then nurses, uh, I think they want to have like a 15 to 1 ratio. So they're, they, they are implementing rules that will increase costs for most every nursing home uh, across the country. Why? Because care is bad. Oh. Uh, care, if, you, if you know if any of the list. All right, hang on, hang on. Dude. No, yeah. Adam, I'm just going through step two and three in my head yep. real quick. All right, so if yep. care is bad, we need better nurses. But if you require twice as many nurses on the same budget to be hired, then it's going to have downward pressure on the pay and the lower you pay the nurses the worse the nurses are going to get because good no- nurses will take better jobs and so you in there an argument to make that this care would just be worse it might be more plentiful but it would be worse well it's really not the nurses uh the, you you got to recognize that the staffing shortages and the issues that we have are are a small percent in the nurses and let me say there are two hundred thousand open nursing jobs across the country 10,000 of those are in the state of Texas. So demanding to have more nurses, period, is going to be inflationary. That's number one. But number two is that the the majority of these jobs that we're talking about are CNAs. They're nursing assistants uh, that would be on the floor. And and anyone who's had family, they're going to tell you, you know, there's people are unresponsive. I don't I don't disagree with the intention that there needs to be uh, better care, more care in these homes. It's just how they structured it. 
and and frankly, the demand on the nurses in particular uh, that that these rules are going to have to be modified. And they, you know, they will be modified, I'm sure. But it, it's creating a lot of pressure and will continue to create uh, uh uh, and, you know, pressure in our in our industry, hiring people away from operators like me when they have to fill more operations in nursing homes. All right, Adam, uh, thanks for updating us on that situation. How can they find your work outside of WBAP? Well, uh, Cambridge Caregivers serves the Metroplex, Dallas, Fort Worth, and uh, we're in home private duty. Come see us, Cambridge CambridgeCaregivers dot com. Right. And it's Adam Lampert, not Lambert, the guy from Queen or American Idol, Thank wherever he's from. Yeah. Thank you for that. I, I'm sure you get confused by for that all the time. Thank you, Adam. All right. Let's go to Martin and Euless. You're next up on WBAP. Do you have a question for Kamala's interview? I have several, as a matter of fact. Let's the most hit it. pertinent one is, where is Joe Biden? He's on a beach in California right now, if you're being specific. Well, that's nice, but... Uh, wouldn't you think that with the attempted assassination of uh, President Trump and the death of Corey, they might be out there, one or both of them, updating the American people to let us know that uh, our our politicians are safe? No. And he's safe? No, that would make Trump a sympathetic figure and humanize him and hurt them politically. So, no. I would also like to ask about the infl- uh, inflation issue. She's, she says she's going to fix it now. Yet a couple months ago, she was applauding and praising Bidenomics. So I thought a Bidenomics was fixing us all this. And by the way, I could care less that there's two fewer chips in a bag of Doritos. What I do care about is the fact that uh, eggs, milk, sugar uh, are up 50 percent. I do care about that interest rates on housing um, is up um, in double digits. I do care that um, gas is up. I wonder if anybody's going to ask him. And again, you know, she said that he was the most consequential president, that he did more in three years than any other president in two years. So why is she running away from, from their track record? I mean, she still is vice president, right? She was vice president for the last three or four years, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, Martin, I'm out of time. I just wish, sir, I wish you worked at CNN and you were running the interview because these will all be better questions than the, what's going to get asked tomorrow, you can bet. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Martin. If you want to be next, 800-288-9227. What do you hope Kamala gets asked? What should she be asked in tomorrow's CNN interview? This is The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3.